Hey everybody, welcome to Whiskey Central. My name is Shayla, and today we're doing a review of Dewar's White Label. So I've got some history for you today, but if you want to skip to the nosing, you can go to the timestamp in the description box below. And if you like whiskey reviews, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. So in 1846, John Dewar opened a wine and spirit shop in Perth. So when Dewar's died in 1880, he left the business to his two sons, John and Tommy. John handled the business side and Tommy handled the marketing. He started in London. He would go into pubs and then ask for Dewar's. And then a couple days later, a sales agent would come in and kind of push the bar owner into buying some bottles. And 10 years later, Dewar's was a main supplier for London pubs and restaurants. So in 1891, Andrew Carnegie requested that a small cask of whiskey be sent to his friend in Washington, D.C., Benjamin Harrison. The publicity wasn't great for Benjamin Harrison, though. Uh, people criticized him for drinking scotch instead of American-made bourbon. But it was really good for Dewar's. Uh, the, the orders from America started pouring in. And with this newfound popularity, Thomas kind of started thinking about the brand globally. He traveled all over the world to promote Dewar's and he even wrote a book about it. In 1897, the first ever film advert for a drink was made. It was commissioned by Thomas Dewar and produced by the Edison Company. With growing demand, John Dewar commissioned the Aberfeldy Distillery to be designed by Charles Doig. He designed over 56 distilleries in Scotland and always put a Doig ventilator, also known as a pagoda roof, on his distilleries. All right, so let's get into the details of this whiskey. This bottle will run you about $20 and it's owned by the Bacardi Group. It's a non-age dated whiskey and it also has a non-disclosed mash bill. It says it's up to 40 different malt and grain whiskeys and this is also colored. So I'm gonna pour a drum of this, let it sit for about 10 minutes and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I've let this open up for about 10 minutes. Let's go in for a nose. So the first thing I get is like peatiness. It's not super peaty, but it's kind of like funky, musty kind of peatiness. And then you get kind of like, um, it's like a sharp young grain whiskey. Like a little, it's just kind of harsh. And then um, it kind of smells like, um, I don't know, it's like apple florally kind of thing. And then you get some heather and some honey. It's like a light honey though, which sounds weird, but I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's not super, super honey. It's just like, a delicate, I don't know. Alright, let's go in for a taste. Cheers, guys. So you get that a little bit of peatiness, a little bit of musty kind of funk. You get a little bit of heather. A little bit of honey. Not too much. One thing I will say is you don't get like, I don't get any like vanilla or caramel really on this. Um, so I think it's more like, I think it's aged in older casks that don't have as much flavor left to give. So um, there isn't those typical kind of vanilla and caramel notes from the ex-bourbon casks, but yeah, it's not too bad of a dram. So I'm gonna finish it up and I'll be right back with my recommendation. So I think this is pretty good for the price. Uh, it's only $20. It's not good, it's not bad. Um, to me, it feels a little bit thin. It's not very complex, but for $20, it's pretty good. Um, if you do like this, uh, it has Aberfeldy in it, so you could try Aberfeldy 12. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. Next week, I'm gonna be doing a review of Woodford's Reserve. So if you don't wanna miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Different shirt, same day. Let's go. <laughs> Boom, motherfucker. 
80 fucking takes for that one sentence. Charles Doig. Now <laughs> uh, hmm. Am I recording? Little buddy, what you want? Some violent shit. Two step and laying back, still wild and shit. What up? Hey, baby, I got the potion. Take a sip of this and put your back in motion. Still working like a slave, learning tricks of the trade, and again, I'm staying in my eyes, and I'm rich and I'm paid. Music to get myself wealthy. Hey, here's a concept that works. 20 million other white rappers emerge, but no matter how many fish in the sea, it would be so empty without me.